here is uh, some help for a couple of the problems that appear on your uh, homework assignment. <laughs> I'm going to start with uh, number four. I think you can handle the first one on that page is a probability thing. This one is a little bit more difficult. Um, and I'll show you how to do one example, and then we'll work from there, and then you can do the rest. Uh, this one is about a dihybrid cross where you have this kind of thing, and you have to, well, what they're giving you is they're giving you data, and you have to figure out, uh, you have to figure out the cross. Now, you see right away that the data shows some kind of 3 to 1 ratio. So that's a hint. Okay, anytime you see a 3 to 1 ratio, you're expecting some kind of heterozygous uh, cross. Okay, remember, if you get a 1 to 1 ratio, you're getting a cross probably like this, or a heterozygous cross, a homozygous recessive. Anyway, so if we take a look at this problem, the easiest way to do this is to separate this into separate this into um, pod the two different phenotypes. So according to this, in sesame plants, the one pod condition is dominant to the three pod condition. All right. So if we look at our data here, we have this is what we have. We have uh, 318 plus 98 is uh, 416 one pod and zero three pod. So that tells us that, well, if we think about that a minute, that means that in the phenotypes of the offspring here in the one pods, all of them have at least one big P. Okay. So our question wants us to determine the genotypes for the two parents for all possible matings. So let me erase some of the stuff I have written around here and say, all right, so we need to determine the genotypes for all possible matings. So we know right now that the child here has one big P and we're not sure about the other one. So let's leave that for now. Okay, so well, what that means then, because this was all one pod, we had to have either this or we had either big P, big P cross little P, little P, or we had to have big P, big P cross big P, little P, or we had this. Right? There's no other thing we could have had. So we know that here are the possible matings for this plant for the pod shape. Let's talk about leaf shape. Leaf shape, we have 318. Let's break this up. Now we have 318 normal to 98 wrinkled. That's approximately a 3 to 1 ratio, normal to wrinkled. And it says that normal leaf is dominant to wrinkled leaf. Well, as soon as you see this, you know you had this cross. It's a very high probability of that cross. And you're like, well, it's not exactly 3 to 1. You're correct, but it's close enough. So then, uh, we could say that one parent is for sure big P, big P, big LLL. For sure. If you look up here, one of the parents had to be that, and the other parent could have been any of those crosses up there. So it could have been anything, big LLL. And if you want to, you can write in all the possibilities here. It won't matter. That's what they all could have been. So when you're doing other ones of this kind, what you want to do is you want to separate the phenotypes. So if you have two one pod wrinkled to two 
three pod wrinkled. Okay, and that's all you have. You know that you're looking at the one pod versus three pod. Okay, if you have four genotypes, you have four genotypes, you've got to look at the numbers of each separate one. I don't know how else to make that uh, any easier right now. Uh, blood type is another one that gives uh, people trouble. Let me scroll down a second. And I'm not going to tell you the answer to this, but I'm going to tell you that uh, blood type is an example of multiple alleles, where big A equals type A, big B equals type B, an A and a B allele is called codominance. You get AB blood. And the recessive is O. Then the book, they use capital IA, capital IB, and they use, they use a lowercase i. I like to use just the A's, the B's, and little o's to represent type O. So really... This is the situation. If you have big A, little o, you're type A. If you have big B, little o, you're type B. If you have two big Bs, you're type B. If you have an A and a B, you're AB. And if you have two little o's, you're O. That might make that problem easier for you.